Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in here to the El Paso History Radio Show. Today is April 9th, 2022, and we are talking about the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro and their upcoming symposium titled April 1598, Birth of the American Southwest, and focusing on La Toma, traditions, descendants, connections, gastronomy, plus the history surrounding all of it. We are, of course, live here on News Radio 690 KTSM, streaming live on our YouTube channel on our Facebook page, El, Has- El Paso History Radio Show, and on the page, Remember in El Paso When. This is the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso and, of course, El Paso County, kind of uh, in this reference here. And people can find us also audio streaming live on the Internet at KTSMRadio.com when you click on the iHeartRadio link. And we do have a history moment today at the top of Hour 2 from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk. It is about the Camino Real in El Paso County and its specific history of the trail itself here. So our guest today is Al Borrego, a president of the Cultural Heritage Society just mentioned there. So, Al, thank you very much for joining us in studio here today. Really good to be here, Andrew. Uh, it's good to be here and and uh, inaugurating myself with you. After mm-hmm. that, I think this is my you're my third one here on the show. Uh, started out with Leon, and then you're oh, yes. and then now now you. That's awesome. Oh, but, yeah, happy to have you along. We've gone again the subjects that you discuss here and you get into long time focuses of a program such as this, right? And uh, ones we're happy to continue to do that focus on here. So for people who may not be familiar with the idea. Of it, I mean the Camino Real. People, I feel like it's been getting increased visibility over recent-ish years. I mean, it was an effort even before the pandemic of some of the signage and the recognition that has come along with it. Even just on, you know, along Donovan Drive, where uh, people will be. Well, I'll be going a little bit later today to Pepe's, but but just even more of the idea of this connected trail that really, when you look further at it, it it's an underpinning that defines kind of. I mean, even just you go north of here. You keep running into towns that have uh, Spanish names and all the way up into even, you know, southern Colorado. And then suddenly it, it changes here. And that is very much historically defined by, well, the Camino Real, among other things here. So for the people who aren't familiar with the organization, the Cultural Heritage Society, uh, what is all y'all's focus? How do you go about describing it? Uh, well, basically, our mission is to uh, promote, preserve, and educate the public on the history of the Camino. Uh, We always say we don't want the history of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro to find itself stuck in uh, exhibits at museums because we're still living it today and uh, we continue to live it. So we want to keep it alive. So we actually got a picture up here right now over on our social media. If you're out in Radio Land wondering what that we're talking about sometimes, we do put up some pictures along with us to help support the idea. So we've got the picture from actually the National Park Service here is the one, the example of uh, essentially the Camino Real as it fully existed in, well, its heyday particularly, but of course the roots and impacts of this can still be traced because this stretched all the way from Mexico City all the way up to uh, Santa Fe and was essentially the jumping off points for all points beyond there. Right. It actually goes all the way up to Okeo Wenge, which was San Juan de los Caballeros uh, by the Spaniards. It was named San Juan. Uh, now it's Okeo Wenge, mm-hmm. but it's right north of Española, New Mexico, which just a uh, uh, up the road from Santa Fe. But yeah, from Mexico City to there, about 1,600 miles and uh, all living today. 420, what, four years? Yeah, even more than. And so here's a little bit slightly closer view of it. So all of this is to say that this was a massively impacting trail because of, I mean, the, again, the entire Spanish influence within this area of the world and then the way you all put it here actually with the upcoming event because um I mean, among other organizations that we have in town, some are more active, some are not. But you all have been very active, including, uh, you know, during the last couple of years, holding uh, these symposiums. And this one is pretty provocatively titled for people who may be curious about this kind of history. Again, April 1598, Birth of the American Southwest. Now, to you and me, this may be like, yeah, of course, we, we talk about this all the time. But again, for people who aren't familiar with the concept here, this may sound a little radical. The idea of 1598, well, what are we talking about here as the birth of the American Southwest? So kind of from that standpoint, I mean, just how'd you come about the title for this particular event you got coming up here? And again, that dated uh, the end of April, April 30th of this month. It's actually going to be on the actual day, which is April the 30th, 1598. Mm-hmm. 
when uh, the Spanish uh, colonizer Don Juan de Oñate came through here. And here in the area of San Elisario, Texas, um, had performed the actual act of possession for the king of Spain and uh, declared all of the land from San Elisario north to southern Colorado, all the land that the Rio del Norte, the Rio Grande as we know it, uh, drains into as New Mexico. So basically, New Mexico was born on that day, on April the 30th, 1598, and uh, so was the American Southwest as we know it today because it became populated at that point which is 22 years before the Pilgrims even land. Right, which has led to some interesting situations in uh, slightly more recent history, such as, let's just say, notable persons involved in the idea of preservation of history going and uh, doing some civil disobedience near Plymouth Rock over there on the right. East Coast in kind of a protest of it. Because, I mean, the possession of La Toma, as we're going to discuss a little bit further, is important here. But it's among other things that there's the argument made that uh, this region, El Paso, actually saw the first Thanksgiving, if you want to go by its technical definition, not the one that's often referred to by that phrase, but the technical idea of a as part of a, you know, a colonizing force then coming in and giving a feast of thanks and involving potentially in some of the reenactments, you know, some of the native peoples here. So if you're going along just definitionally about what the first Thanksgiving was, we have, I still firmly believe that we have in this region a claim to the actual first one. Well, once you get into superlatives, you get in trouble, you know. <laughs> of course. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, I totally dismissed that myth uh, about five years ago and uh, cleared it off our dockets in San Elisario because uh, we look like uh, not very bright people over there talking about it. Uh, the fact is that the way it was, um, the way it was um, announced mm. was in comparison to the pilgrims of Plymouth. Uh, like you just said, they went up there and caused a big scene over there saying, we're first, we're first. Mm -hmm. And the, the way it was formulated was that it happened here first before Plymouth Rock. Even though Plymouth Rock was not the first either, they never claimed to be the first. It's actually probably St. Augustine, which was 35 years before us. Mm -hmm. So who knows who, what it was. But we didn't have that kind of Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving that they had in Plymouth Rock that it's supposed to be before uh, is, is a whole different type of Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. That Thanksgiving is the pilgrims thanking the Wampanoags for helping them through the winter and showing them how to plant. They had a big feast. They invited them. If you want to call it a Thanksgiving, because they did that every day, they gave thanks every time they had a meal. If you want to compare it to the Plymouth one, then you got to have three elements. You got to have not necessarily turkey, but you got to have food. Of course. And then you got to have a pilgrim or a visitor. In this case, it'd be the Spaniards. And then you got to have a native. That's the key element is the native is really the element because mm -hmm. that's who they're thanking. So in our case here in San Elisario, when they had La Toma, which is the important thing, right. which that we can discuss. To me, that's the main thing. That makes it the birth of the American Southwest. The Toma is very different. Here, when they had the, th the Toma on that day, they did have an ecclesiastical celebration. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they ate. There was food. The key thing they had there was a comedy in the afternoon. Probably, I'm not going to say the first, but one of the first uh, theatrical performances in what is now the U.S., which mm -hmm. is even better, Miss Protzman, who built the Adobe Horseshoe Theater, put that on her table tents. Didn't mention nothing about a Thanksgiving, but mentioned about the first theatrical performance. Theatrical performance. Interesting In definition 1972. So um, that that thing is very different. And the reason that I, I, I didn't believe it was once I actually read further into the archives, somebody just didn't read further, or they just read it and didn't care. But the archives state, and you can go day by day on the expedition, they get there, they do La Toma, La Dida, April mm. the 30th. Then it says on May the 1st, they continued up the river for two leagues. Then it says May the 2nd, they traveled a league and a half up the river. And then on May the 3rd, it says we traveled another two leagues. But it had a note there. On this day, 
we met the first Indians on the river. Mm, mm -hmm. Two were brought to the camp by the Sargento Mayor, the Sergeant Major. They clothed them, they gave them gifts, and sent them on their way. Later that afternoon, eight more came by their own accord. So my big question was, so if the first Indians they saw on the river were on May the 3rd, where were the Indians for their so-called first Thanksgiving? That is a fair point you make. Like I said, some of the depictions of the reenactments we've held about you know, on some of the you know, uh, quadricentennials and those kind of events have depicted it as such. But uh, again, the historical records are always kind of paramount here. Uh -huh. I just, I mean, it's kind of, uh, again, a our point I like to argue with some people who are finer points of history here, but really it's a very different kind of situation because yes. among other things, even about some of the first uh, give, giving of thanks they had here was more about the transit and the journey as exactly. opposed to... so argument about a survival of a different way but again it's we're mm -hmm. coming at this from different perspectives but uh well it's a often a good conversation point when someone says hey uh for that's has no idea about the history of this area well we i i argue we have a claim to the first thanksgiving and what became the continental united states even if they're again you get finer points yeah, of it here down into the nitty-gritty i just i just like to say that that whole and i called it a concept a long time ago that whole concept to me is very important because it's done a lot of good mm -hmm. for in the tourism industry. People know about the Mission Trail. All of that was done. All of that was done at the same time, 1989. Right. So all of that has helped through the years to bring more tourism. It's a good, it's a plus thing. It just doesn't make us look too bright when we're saying it. And we still have Thanksgiving in November. See, so yeah. that never changed. So what does that tell you? But I don't think that'll be changing anytime <laughs> soon because it's almost, I mean, it's more of a, a cultural, you know, yes. uh, it's a civic holiday at this point here. So I doubt that'll be changing here. I just, uh, well, indicating these, I love discussing it and getting these yeah. discussions into yeah. it here. But again, the actual, what happened during this and what you will be marking is fr fairly significant for the, again, the way that this area was changed by the arrival of the Spaniards and European influence in general here, and then really defining the rest of what happened here. So again, the event that we're kind of framing this around, this upcoming uh, history symposium uh, with the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Dentro, La Toma is pretty critical and literally foundational in a lot of ways here. And so that's something that you'll also be talking about right. during this symposium. We're getting pretty close to the need for that first break of the hour here right now. Again, if you're just joining us, guest right now is Al Borrego, president of the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro. So we'll be talking more about that, the event coming up, and more of the specifics we'll be getting into within that here. So uh, we're going to take that first break of the hour right now. A lot of people ch chiming in with us online right now. Steve Ivey, uh, Marjorie Rivera. Alice Benton, Harry Kirk, uh, Victor Luciano Guzman uh, from uh, Casas Grandes, uh, Arizona, for this one out, uh, mentioning it here. But we don't, uh, all, of course, ignore the people that are a little bit closer to home. Harry Kirk on the east side and uh, Marjorie Velas Benton from uh, northeast El Paso. And uh, Steve Ivey saying, hey, Al, great show, gentlemen, specifically there. So uh, appreciate the feedback there. You can leave your comments over on the social media. We're up on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch.tv here these days. So you can see when we mentioned those pictures, you can see them up over there if you so desire. But um, also, oh, we got the uh, further out one right now coming in clutch right before we take the break here. Uh, Michelle from uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Um, good afternoon over there already. So cultural and uh, just geographic distribution, certainly pretty wide here already. So we'll be talking further about, again, some of these cultural roots and how they're still talked about today here. So uh, stick around. We'll be back right after this break with more of the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Many you are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. 
Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1420. Welcome back here to the program. I'm, of course, your host, Andrew J. Polk. We are the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook and many of the other social media outlets we're on these days. But Facebook ended up being some of our primary pages here. So you can find us, again, El Paso History Radio Show over there. Where you can also go for our weekly promo announcements on the topics of the program each week. Also, of course, got uh, the streaming and the video and the channels and all the other videos we've done on this subject and topic and also from El Paso Gold over the years over on YouTube. That's YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV, which includes, again, the El Paso uh, Gold DVDs from Capstone Productions for the last uh, couple of decades plus at this point, and also the 20 recent segments produced for ABC7 uh, from the El Paso History TV series, also over there again, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. A lot of ways to get at us there, but of course we're online and streaming over on uh, ktsmradio.com here. Again, joined in studio by Al Borrego, president of the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro, talking about, well, the Camino Real, the history of that it came along with it, and also in all in reference to their upcoming event, the History Symposium, April 1598, Birth of the American Southwest. So, one other thing I need to mention with our advertisers here, Pepe's Restaurant in Canyon Tio is open for in-house dining at 6761 Donovan Drive. Call Pepe's at 915-877-2152. That's 915-877-2152. Home of the one and only Margarita. And interestingly enough, they're actually pretty close to, I mean, specifics maybe evade it, but uh, what are the routes as it is even still modern used of the Camino Real itself there along uh, Donovan Drive there. That's right. They sure are. 
So uh, well, I'll be going out there. So if you want to come and see part of that along with me, you're more than welcome to right after the show. Give me a few minutes to get out of the studio here, but then I'll be over there. Uh, but so we're talking here again with Al about this upcoming event. So we were talking a little bit before the break about La Toma, this very kind of core concept for how – well, everything that came after it, because, I mean, the Camino Real, guys, it was established from Mexico, and then we had, you know, uh, pioneers and pushers out, of, so to speak, of the area. Again, Don Juan de Añate, as you mentioned here, continuing it further. But, so the way Europeans and the people who came across to do the colonization efforts and, you know, the building of the uh, new Spanish empires happened in this area, they had very... Interesting concepts that would have been literally foreign, almost alien to, you know, the natives of this area. Because, I mean, even now it sounds a little bit interesting the way to describe it about what La Toma is declaring that all of this land, and even they couldn't have possibly known at that time how much land they were actually talking about. But, again, a European concept of everything drained by this river, among other things, which didn't even really apply to the Rio Grande because in, you know, Europe a lot of rivers are organized you know, steady, stable. They reused them as borders and boundaries for a region that anyone who may have some understanding of the history of the Rio Grande and its own, own use as an international border might understand, yeah, it does not quite work that way. So literally, among other things, rivers working differently. But even then, just the concept and then what came after it of La Toma is in foundational to then how the Spanish then proceeded to expand through the area. Right. Yeah, it's uh, it, the, the whole concept of La Toma uh, I believe was more of um, more of a whatever we find here because they were here for treasures for the crown. That's what they mm-hmm. were after. It wasn't uh, necessarily about the land. I don't think. I think it was more because how many people did only have to have? You know, he had a 539 people with mm-hmm. him. He had a grand total of 120 soldiers. It's not like he's going to come up here and try to pick a fight with anybody. Uh, he'd be gone in about 20 seconds, even with rocks. You know. But uh, there's a lot of uh, I've read. I've read a few things. I don't read that much other than archival material, <laughs> okay. and uh, that, I just don't. I I start reading some, and I find I'm like, oh, that. I mean, there's the primary there's a- source is not good on this one, you know. So, and it's, it's fascinating the amount of some primary sources here because uh, Don Juan de Oñate, um among historical figures, the one we end up knowing the most about are often those that are essentially understand what I would call publicity these days. Right. But at that point was just uh, records and documentation. I mean, he brought people with him to literally write down everything that was going on and happened here. So what you were mentioning right. there before about, well, we traveled so many leagues this day. It was because not just because someone had a really good memory and decided to talk with someone about it later. Literally, there were people there right. with him. And again, again, pretty wild concept going into completely uncharted territory. Usually you take only what you might need to like survive, but then they got guys looking around. I mean, big, heavy books. I mean, even paper was literally right. heavier at those a points lot in time. Of paper. They had a lot of paper. They had a scribe. He, uh, every, pretty much every organization, I mean, every expedition had a scribe. Uh, even the onesie, twosie explorers had scribes. And we know the history of those people. Uh, well, really, the the ones that actually returned. Well, that's too. Because yeah. the ones that didn't return, we don't know anything about. And there's a few that did return. And uh, and you got to know that the the Oñate expedition, they read, uh, for example, Coronado's documents. Mm-hmm. They read uh, Sanchez's documents. They read Espejo's documents. So they knew, uh, I'll give you an example. There was a, when the Oñate expedition gets up there closer to what's now Albuquerque, uh, they did know of the Acoma tribe, and one of the entries in there says that uh, the Coronado expedition uh, said that the Acoma tribe was fuerte, which hmm. means strong. Now, in what sense? Figure it out, you know. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but the, it did mention that, so it was one of those uh, groups that actually had a had a mark on it. You know, hey, the, these are strong. Uh, I don't know what that meant, but but I can assume a lot of things, but I just can't say that's what I thought. I mean, people have told me what, you know, I mean, was, uh, were they socially strong? Were they, yeah. did they have a lot of crops? Did they have Individually whatever, powerful, right? yeah, powerful, a lot of them, you know, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what a, it? it's yeah. a provocative phrase if right. you're wondering about inter- what your interaction coming up is. So thinking about it from that perspective can leave a lot of question marks, yeah. certainly. Sure, sure. But La Toma, 
uh, like you said, it's it's something that was foreign to, well, obviously foreign to mm-hmm. natives. That's all that was here. Uh, but they, it, I'm sure there was natives in the area, San Isario, during La Toma and stuff. But it's not like they were there saying, hey, hello, welcome, or anything. They're watching from afar, especially they were Apaches. So of they're course, watching yeah. from afar. They're not they're not coming in to see. Like it said, three days later, they caught two, brought them to the camp. They clothed them. They gave them gifts. Later that evening, eight more come because they kind of like the gifts, I guess, you know, on their own. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not like there was battles all along the way because the next day they traveled more or less to this area over here by the crossing. Mm-hmm. And uh, they they come over here and the Mansos, which are the same people that they had got captured, mm-hmm. um, like 44 of them or something, it said. And uh, they helped them cross the sheep and the pigs across the river so they wouldn't drown. So it's not like you know, it was a constant battle. And maybe that's why they called them Mansos, because that means tame. Hmm. Oh, mean, okay. It could mean other things too, but that's pretty much the words used for tame. Or interesting. I don't think I've ever mellow, actually heard that one before. Or yeah. mellow, or yeah, that's what it is. You know, so they they didn't run into those problems. But the toma, like like uh, we were talking, I mean, it's um, it's something that uh, a possession of the land. Mm. You know, I mean, he said it. I take I take possession of all the land that the Rio del Norte drains into, and then. But the key words that got me, they got me actually looking into this and going into the archives was a part of it that said he said in the name of god in the name of king philip the second all of that cool stuff and then he says for their preservation and ours hmm. and i'm like whose preservation well what the the deer the buffalo no he's talking about the natives mm-hmm. and the thing is that the minute he did that see and that's part of the camino real thing people are like well, the Camino Real. There's some other Camino Reals that have come popped up, and right. and they're not they're not sanctioned by the crown. Mm-hmm. If they're not sanctioned by the crown, it's not a Camino Real like the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro or the Camino Real de Tierra Fuera, which goes from Mexico City to New Orleans. Right. So, but but that's what it is. It's sanctioned by the king. That's why it's called a Camino Real. Yeah, the King's Road. The yeah, King kind of has exactly. to be involved yeah, in this for it is. to be considered that way. Tell you what, we got a lot more we need to talk about this to develop this story here. But again, we're talking about this, among other things, in the reference to the upcoming History Symposium with the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro, April 1598, Birth of the American Southwest. That coming up here this month, April 30th. We'll talk more about those details coming out of this next break. Got to take it here. A lot more people chiming in with us online as well. Uh, Daniel Rivera saying uh, good morning everyone sending blessings from Clint Texas quote a small town founded in 1883 as a railroad town to San Elizario so uh, more people chiming in that way uh, Gary De Leon saying uh, looking forward to the symposium hi Al uh, Flaca Jimenez good morning as well Angie Salazar from not just south of some of the regions we're talking about well just where well, the regions that we're talking about just south of where she is in uh, Colorado and uh, Rose Rodriguez as well so we'll get into more of that as well as uh, getting more into again the importance of La Toma and how y'all are going to be talking about it among other things after this next break so we'll be back after here just a couple minutes here on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. 
Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV. Welcome back here to the El Paso History Radio Show. A couple of partners that we like to talk about here because... uh Talking about the history is a good thing, but getting out and seeing it and doing more with it is also very important. I uh, mean, one of our recent guests on the show, of course, Celebration of Our Mountains. Make sure to check them out at celebrationofourmountains.org. They got some upcoming hikes and events here because, again, getting out and seeing it, well, I like to do it when I get the chance here where you're on the show here on Saturday mornings when a lot of them start here. But they got some upcoming ones, such as on uh, April 16th, they will be doing a useful plant series with, at the El Paso Archaeological Museum uh, with Eric. 
Eric Kappis. Um, and also more events coming on around that for later in the year. And also then on Friday, April 22nd, Astronomy Night, Moon Gazing, and the Lyriad Meteor Shower with Apollo Galvan here. And so if you want to check them out again, celebrationofourmountains.org. And also, of course, I have to mention our friends over at Monterey Asset Management have changed their name to M1EP Management Corporation. Their website now, m1ep.com. That's M numeral one EP.com. You can also give them a call at 915-592-4549. That's 915-592-4549. And just uh, speaking of some of our partners here, also uh, Barbara Given Bainey chiming in over on the social media uh, from Remember in El Paso Win, which we're also up on streaming now. We also had uh, Keith uh, Wilden chiming in there saying, Morning, folks, out and about today. Been listening on old school radio frequency in the ham terminology he prefers there. But again, joined here in studio by Al Borrego, president of the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro. Had a decent question come in from a submission online here as well about what does that last part mean? Because you had mentioned a different trail above the, the Tierra Afuera, but for the ter- Tierra Adentro, that part of it, what does that mean in this context? Uh, Camino Real de Tierra Adentro means Royal Highway to the interior lands as opposed to Camino Real de Tierra Fuera, which is to the exterior lands. You're coming to the inside of the land afuera, which goes through New Orleans. That one goes to port, and you can go out. You can go off the land there. Okay. So it used to be called uh, Camino a la Francia, because, of course, all the French were there. Of course. And then, uh, of course, now it's Camino Real de Tierra Fuera. You don't hear much about it. Uh, They kind of overpowered it with Camino de los Texas. I don't know where that goes. Huh, okay. Interesting here. But we also do have the capability, uh, I haven't mentioned it here today, but we got some people with burning questions here. We do have the capability to take a phone call. That number to call 915-544-5876, 915-544-KTSM. Do have a question here right now. We have uh, George with us here right now. Uh, George, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Sure thing. So you had a question uh, about particularly part of the crossing, right? Well, I did the traditional history on the crossing of the Rio Grande from Oñate, Florida, all the way up to the last bridge that was built. Mm-hmm. So what was it, your question? Go ahead. So what was your question? I'm sorry on your question? Yeah, yeah. So you wanted to ask specifically about how it went about, or, or what did you want to know specifically? Uh, somewhat of a chronological order. Uh, the, the first uh, the, tran- uh, the first folks, did they wait across at a little water time or did they use a ferry? And then uh, subsequent to that, the first bridge followed by bridge two, three, four, and 5. So question there being about how did they actually effectuate the crossing? You're the kind of thing that you know precipitates the ability of then all the events that come after here because, I mean, part of the reason of the re- naming of the region, you know, um, of the El Paso del Rio del Norte because this was the pass that they got into to be able to do everything that happened north of it. So decent question about how they actually do that, Al. Okay, so originally a lot of, uh, a lot of people think that If you've been to Chihuahua, per se, from El Paso, you go from El Paso directly to Chihuahua through the Salamayucan Desert. Mm -hmm. But the way Oñate came, when Oñate was coming up through the Carrizal, what is now the Carrizal, and then uh, Mm -hmm. came up to uh, some lakes they call the Lake Laguna de los Patos, uh, Lake of the Ducks. Uh, Right when they got to there, they made a right-hand turn towards the mountains and in between the mountains over to the what's now the Rio Grande, the Rio del Norte, they called it mm-hmm. um, about a 90 mile, um, about 90 miles extra on their on their route. And they're like, well, why did why did they go that way? Why didn't they come straight across this? Because straight across was through the desert mm-hmm. and they basically avoided the core of the desert. And the bigger thing in the desert was the Apache. So they knew that That's they true. were going to have to confront the Apache in the desert. They were prevalent there. So they went around the mountain where they weren't, where there were no Apache, and they actually hit the river. And if you look at maps of the old river here in, in uh, El Paso County, you can see how the river was. 
San Elisario, right. uh, Socorro, Isleta, were all on the south side of the river back then when Oñate came through. Speaking about that malleability of rivers in this area right. versus the way that, well, the European conception happened of them, and even then different interim periods before the full move to the way it is now, you know, La Isla and all right. of that own bit of fascinating history. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it was literally in a different position than it is sure. today because it was a meandering river before it got concreted in like we have today. Exactly. Yeah, so I mean, the they hit the river uh, downriver at about a place called uh, Guerrero Coahuila. I mean, Guerrero Prajedis, Prajedis mm -hmm. Guerrero, which is south of uh, Fabens. So they hit the river there, and they start coming up the river. So they, a lot of people think they crossed the river when they hit the river. They hit it on April the twentieth. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. still ten days away from the Toma, which is in San Elisario. They got up to San Lisario on April the 26th, the San Lisario area. There was no San Lisario. And then still four days later, they finally built the nave to have a mass and all of this. They had it there, and they actually hit the river up here by Hart's Mill, mm -hmm. which wasn't there either. Uh, they hit the river there uh, on um, May the 4th. So mm -hmm. they get to the river there. They ran into the Monso tribe, and they're sitting there with them. And figuring out how they're going to cross. So they found a fjord there mm -hmm. uh, of rock. So essentially a low spot in the river where it seemed like they could cross and here. Because hard. there wasn't necessarily a lot of outside of seasonal changes, ebbs and flow in the river itself. Right. So it wasn't like you could wait for a low period of time. So they had to find a spot yeah. that would be... Uh, it would be essentially advantageous to do yep. so because I actually got another good picture over here online. This is a more modern interpretation, but, I mean, the idea of these heavy right. caretas and all the stuff here, because, sure, it wasn't a huge force that you were mentioning here, both settlers, documenters, and soldiers. They sold a lot of stuff with them, so yeah. the idea of taking over something on this order of magnitude of vehicle... 83 carts. ...would be, I mean, you, you, you couldn't just say, well, we'll see how this river works out for <laughs> us, and I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, they, they were, yeah. I mean, that, that was going to sustain them. They, they right. needed to take care of these, so they weren't going to be necessarily gambling with that. Yeah, and they had a lot of livestock. Uh, and there's a, big, a bunch of big numbers, but you got to remember the scribe for Onyate was a poet, so he, uh, he <laughs> okay. used uh, you know, the, the poet, poet's license there. So, But, uh, yeah, they had a lot of livestock. They had pigs, uh, sheep, and, uh, and uh, in the archives it states that the Monsos helped them cross the mm -hmm. pigs and sheep so they wouldn't drown. They carried them across. So it wasn't very wide, I assume. Uh, if you look at the area there, it's kind of hard to see that it would be very wide. Further south, it was very muddy mm -hmm. and deep. So they, uh, they just followed the river all the way up into the mountains. Where I'm pretty sure they already knew that there was going to be rocks and stuff that they could... And they, they had a, a, a team running ahead that was coming back and say, okay, we're going to go through here. We're going to move through here, that kind of stuff. So uh, that's the – now they get to the river based on the question. Uh, they get to the river over here on the 4th. Uh, there's no Juarez, of course. It's it's later on. Uh, it's Paso del Norte on the Mexican side. And uh, they just get there, and they basically walk across it. It was used like that. Mm -hmm. Probably by the natives for years. You know, the natives, the Monsos there told them that the next villages were about three days out. Mm -hmm. So they even got that word going going across. But uh, then the other bridges, I'm not very familiar with when they came. I'll, I do know that uh, around 18, um, 2018, mind you, and this is 1598 when I'm, we were just talking yeah, about. Yeah, we got a span yeah, of yeah. So centuries years here. later, there were no bridges crossing. Uh, up here for a long time, mm. uh, but in the 1800s, they they there was a dam built near Socorro, Texas, and uh, that built was rocks by the Spaniards for for irrigation. It wasn't a complete dam all the way across, but it it held water up and pushed it out. More diversion, right. you know, using diversion, the canals, yeah. all that, uh -huh. your madres, all that kind of yeah. thing. So that's basically it. Uh, I think the Brit, well, the El Paso bridges came later. Uh, I don't think even in 1850 the bridges were there yet, but uh, but of course there was a the, later on they used the uh, the cable basket to cross people down oh, there right, by yeah. Fabens during the Bracero program. I know that was used still there. You know you can go see it. So that kind of stuff was there. The the bridges at Zaragoza and uh, and Fabens in Caseta, mm -hmm. those bridges 
are were really old. They're not even there anymore. Yeah, exactly. Here, so uh, George, that answer a good portion of your question there. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, a little subsequent uh, sub question: Do we know once they cross from what is, of course, now Mexico to the U.S.? Mm-hmm. Did do we know how they got through the Paso del Norte? Did they come up on the east side of the old smelter? Uh, is that the way on yacht they came, or or how do we know it? Because that's a very very narrow gap. And in April, uh, that's uh, snow melt time. time. Mm -hmm. And I've seen pictures before on the two railroad bridges there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I don't know if it's Southern Pacific that owns those bridges or not. But right there at Old Smelter Town, I've seen a picture of the water in the river being from the Old Smelter up high all the way across to the Old McNutt Refinery. Yeah, in fact, and to my understanding, it used to be even a little bit more, it used to be kind of referred to as the gates of the Rio Grande, because if you look on the, well, essentially New Mexico side of it now, the rock and rock face comes almost right up to the river here, and now, of course, we have uh, got Donovan Drive on the Texas side of it here, but that it, that used to be essentially right up to it, again, mm-hmm. referred to as the gates with a kind of a very narrow passage in that area, kind of usually referring to there, of the river, except it's been all quarried out now, so... Yeah, that would have been an interesting one here. So do you know the path? He t- I mean, for a lot, large part, they needed to stick with the river because that was a vital life source for right. them. So they probably would have stuck to it as close as they could. But, yeah, that area, I mean, the river definitely meandered, but that's one of its certainly, you know, kind of fixed points that would have gone through even through most of the history we're talking right. about. Yeah, he basically crossed. Now, I would I don't know exactly because I wasn't there, of course. And it doesn't really say exactly where, but you said something really significant right there. Uh, The place where he crossed, he hearsay says that he called it the El Paso, but Mm. he didn't. He named it Las Puertas. And Mm. you just said that, the gates. Mm. That's exactly what he called them when they crossed. He called it Las Puertas del Rio del Norte. That's what it was actually called that day that Oñate crossed. It's in the archives. It's all over the place. Uh, I think it was 1993 when Leon called it the El Paso. Interesting. That's, what, that's the first time that was said. And uh, but it was called Las Puertas. It's documented everywhere. But you know, we just kind of leave it alone. So it probably went near that here. So yeah, thank you for the point. Right of the where call. you said. Right yeah. where you said. So thank you for the point of the call there, George. You have a good one here. We got to take that next break to get close to the well end of the hour here. So we're going to come back after this break, talk more with Al Borrego here, uh, president of the Cultural Heritage Society of the Comando Real de Tierra Dentro, getting to some more of those questions and comments as we can before the end of the hour here. So just stay tuned. Back after this break with more. Many retire. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. 
The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso. Short timing it here with this last segment of the hour, but of course we'll be back next hour with more discussion on these topics here. Again, joined by, uh, we have Al Borrego here, president of the Cultural Heritage Society of the Comando Real de Tierra Adentro. Again, all of this stuff we're talking about here, y'all going to be focusing on even further with that upcoming event. Again, April 1598, birth of the American Southwest. If people want to find out more information about that, where will be the best place to find that? It's uh, on our website at culturalheritagesociety.com. So culturalheritagesociety.com here. So just keep in mind that if you're looking at all that, because there'll be ways for people to get involved, among other things, if they want to see it, as those kind of things, right? That's right. You bet. Absolutely. All right. We got to get that music back coming up here. So don't worry. We're back top of next hour to talk more about this and get more to the history and all of that. So stay tuned for more of the El Paso History Radio Show in our second hour. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. 
State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. 
Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proof. Welcome here to Hour 2 of the El Paso History Radio Show. Again, I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Continuing on our conversation about some of the upcoming events and the history being talked in it with the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro. But first, to start off Hour 2 here, we do have a history moment from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk on the Camino Real in El Paso County. The first Camino Real, or King's Highway, in North America runs for 42 miles across El Paso County. Established by the Spanish in 1598, it enters the county a few miles south of San Elizario, Texas, and travels north through Socorro and Isleta, and eventually into New Mexico. The Spanish Highway crossed the river north of what is now downtown El Paso. The Spanish call that crossing El Paso, or The Pass. They named the river El Rio del Norte, since it was north of Mexico City. The location became known as El Paso del Rio del Norte, and that's how El Paso, Texas got its name. In 1598, Spanish explorer Don Juan de Oñate led a massive expedition on the Camino Real. 500 soldiers, thousands of cattle and sheep, and 88 ox carts full of equipment and provisions traveled from Mexico City north to Santa Fe. After that journey, the Camino Real became the region's first major trading route. Today, some of our busiest modern highways follow parts of the original Camino Real. For three centuries, the Camino Real was the longest highway in North America. Today, there are road signs marking the trail from San Elizario to West El Paso. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. And along with us, of course, we have to mention some of our great partners in El Paso history work, such as uh, Barbara Given Bainey, who is the operator of the Facebook page Remember in El Paso Win, which we are also up on today. Go there for archive pictures galore. They have uh, more than 33,000 members these days. But please remember, the administrators have worked very hard in researching with photos and the uh, great accumulation of work they have over there. So with the history that is attached to it, when they, you use their photos, please give credit to them. And again, the chief admin and owner, historian Barbara Given Bainey, also affectionately known as BGB. Also admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, and Paul Louie, and moderators Ben Vincent and Ken Weiss. And something I got to mention here because it was a passing moment. Speaking of uh, history in a different way, uh, this last week actually saw uh, the passing of a important person in, uh, well, history that I've dealt with personally in this area. It was also mentioned up over on this site, but also uh, from uh, some of our other partners uh, with Rick Kern, who is a music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio, which you can find at talkandrockradio.com. Uh, I had to mark, unfortunately, the passing this past week of Rod Crosby, noted local musician and someone I got to work with for several years in the production of the Border Legends tour here. So um, condolences to him and his family. And I'm sure that uh, Rick is talking about him, has been talking about him, and will continue to do so. And so just had to mention that as a part of this here. So again, our condolences to him. And uh, thank you for sharing that history with us, both Barbara and Rick. Do appreciate it here. But getting back to, uh, well, so again, some of the history we're discussing here in reference to the uh, Camino Real de Tierra Adentro. We have some uh, interesting people chiming in over on the social media as well because we did have someone actually as we were talking about a part of it here uh al alborego president of the cultural heritage society here actually had someone a magna cervantes a little bit earlier saying uh, good morning listening in louisiana today from part of we were talking about that different trail but again the history of the camino real a couple other questions that came up here um that the passover at the north referring to the four there at hertz mill though some discussion about that happening here daniel rivera then saying it was said by my family and ancestors from my mom's side of the family that uh, Juan de Oñate crossed the river at Las Puertas around Senecu, a small village in the Juarez Valley across from present-day Riverside High School. So some interesting different points we were talking about there of where they made that, again, initial crossing, trying to pinpoint it here. I think the, again, most common local 
almost mythology of it is the idea of it near that, again, uh, La Hacienda, uh, Hearts Mill area. But it would make sense in a variety of different ways for it to have been in different areas. Is we also have uh, uh, Maria Baragon uh, joining us from uh, West Valley City, Utah. So a lot of people tuning in from points uh, east, north, and west of us from here. So appreciate that. So, again, we have been talking about this in context of both y'all's upcoming event and then La Toma. So, how they actually did that, I mean, this wasn't necessarily in relation directly to the crossing itself, but, I mean, these are all connected. Right. Yeah, La Toma is probably the most important event, I think, that's happened here in in a sense of world value, universal value. Mm. La Toma is really important because, um, yep, you, like you were saying earlier, um, it, was a, it was a shock to anybody because they came and mm-hmm. officially took possession of the land. Um the, that possession was uh, was done because they actually wanted to find treasures that they had heard of north of what's now Albuquerque, the seven cities mm-hmm. of gold. Uh, and, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Coronado talked about it when he came back. Uh, Sanchez talked about it when he came back. Espejo talked about it when he came back from that area. None of them saw the gold, but they heard about it. Which, so the word yeah. was out that it was there. So Espejo, when he came back, and, and that's another misconception that everybody thinks that you always see it everywhere. Uh, Onyate got the contract. Well, no, he ended up with the contract. Right. Because it was Espejo that went to the Viceroy to get permission to run an expedition north to take over the area. But uh, he, he was told that the crown had no money to do it so he so said i'll find pay for some it. money and you well, can he do said it yeah. he would pay for it he sent they send a letter to the king a month later comes back uh he the viceroy gets a letter yep tell him to go the problem was espejo had taken off on a clipper ship trying to get there first and got himself killed in cuba mm. they crashed in cuba so now who do i use so the viceroy uh his name was um Carlos, uh, Carlos, Carlos, Carlos. That was his name. <laughs> Carlos. And uh, he, when he was a soldier, his partner as a soldier was Don Juan, was Juan de Oñate. Mm, mm-hmm. And they fought together. See, another thing people think that Oñate was over here and he was a soldier. He wasn't a soldier because we see him at the airport wearing armor and all this stuff. Of course, yeah. But he was 48 years old when he came through here mm-hmm. and did La Toma. He wasn't, he wasn't a soldier he was the governor, is what he was. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing. You know, he's made to be in a conquistador, which I'm like, what did he conquer with 120 soldiers? But uh, that's another thing you got to look at. You got to look at the, it commonsensically. So uh, when he does La Toma, that's the important thing. Because what he brings when he takes possession, not only does he bring things like faith, like the wheel, like architecture, like uh, the loom to make clothing, because there's none, mm-hmm. like uh, seeds in his pocket of plants that didn't exist here, like um, like uh, the livestock, everything, the all livestock, that, yeah. all the domestic animals. There were no animals here, domestic ones. Like right. Cows, pigs, goats, sheep, chickens, all of that he brought that day. I mean, he brought just the way of life that they had. The, the the wheel, he brought all of that in. But the biggest thing he brought that nobody mentions is that when he did La Toma and he took possession for the king, that made every person here a subject of the mm-hmm. crown, which meant that they were they they got all the rights that any Spanish citizen had. See, they don't. Nobody mentions that mm-hmm. because that made all the Indians get the same. They were all subjects of the crown. They had a different way of living. They had a different way of surviving, and then they were introduced to the new ways. Some of them took it. Some of them didn't. But you got to remember, the Spaniards were in what's now Mexico. They were mm-hmm. there for over seventy years right. before this expedition happened. I see people writing, "Well, you know when." There's there's one mention of when when Oñate finally was gone from New Mexico, uh, it says, well, when he returned to Spain, what do you mean when he returned to Spain? He was born in a place called Panuco, which is where Zacatecas is. Mm-hmm. So he he wasn't didn't come from Spain. 
he came from New Spain. Right. A lot of people say my family, they're from Spain. Well, no, they're really from New Spain, you know. So it's there's a lot of misconceptions. A lot of people take it different, think about it different. They don't put it in the context of when it was. So if you start looking at that, then you realize what you have. And maybe even a little bit of a holdover of the whole prestige of the you know hierarchy of the time, the whole peninsula. I mean, right. being directly yeah. from the Spanish yeah, peninsula. That was the big deal. Because yeah. now if you say, I'm, I'm from, uh, oh, wait, Mexico? Literally at that time, it would have made you of a lower rank. Well, supposedly, but it's the same people. And that's mm -hmm. what I tell when I do my talks in Mexico. I'm like, look, you guys, it's not like on September the 15th, 1821, you're at the bullfights or you're watching a folklorico dance or you're playing your Spanish guitar or speaking Spanish. It's not like you, all the Mexicans were in uh, rowboats out in the Pacific waiting for the Spaniards to leave. Mm -hmm. The very next day, all the Spaniards are now Mexican. Right, as and people don't realize upheavals that and changes yeah, there with that history as well. Yeah, so that's that's what you have to look at. You look at you look at uh, what happened after Oñate did La Toma. Well, it it becomes part of New Mexico. <clears throat> people don't realize that either. From San Elizario to Southern Colorado was New Mexico for almost two hundred years. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about that either here, at all. Which I mean, means we yeah. were New Mexico at one point. Yep. As part of the holdings yes. up there, yeah. and again, it, it's we think about this as very kind of set, and where we we love thinking about borders on maps from our modern perspective right. here. But again, even just the way they claimed it, that it was this indefinite area, control was less about okay, well, here's the border, here's the boundary, don't cross this because then you're under my control. It was more of a where could you exert control? What exactly. was you know that's you know how far could you ride in a day and you know project force among other mm -hmm. things? Where did you have outposts that would allow you a radius of control? around so yep. it wasn't exactly how far your arms could shoot but more or less where you could exert control right. was essentially the boundary so these were kind of ephemeral things that could change even depending on the weather right. technically how far you're able to move here right. so that's an important part of the conception and again some of the stuff that you all talk about we again have that image up on screen here right now of this upcoming symposium coming up on april 30th of this year titled April 1598, birth of the American Southwest. So you talk about all of these and other things coming into it here again. Uh, the subtitle that you have with all this and some of the things you'll be going into is La Toma, Traditions, Descendants, uh, Connections, and even Gastronomy. Which we, mm -hmm. I guess we kind of hit it when we talk about domestic animals. When you think about right. chickens, it's hard to think about anything besides what the chickens produce in terms of eggs and, of course, their meat, along with all the right. other animals. Right. So, I mean, gastronomy, you don't usually think about that in terms of history, but it makes perfect sense. It's absolute history. As a matter of fact, when um, UNESCO uh, inscribed the southern part of the Camino Real de Tierra Dentro in Mexico, mm -hmm. that's one of the new entries into the that were allowed was the gastronomy part of it. Hmm. Into, the, into the UNESCO World Heritage part of it. So, yeah, that's why we have it in there. These are the key elements for an inscription of UNESCO, which, of course, that's what we're trying to do. Of course, We're, yeah. we're working towards getting the inscription uh, here in our area from the southern Chihuahua all the way up to Okeowenge. So that's why we do these types of symposiums, history conferences, talks all over the place to, to find out all of these elements that mm -hmm. are part of what we need for the ins inscription. Uh, traditions, we've got uh, folks from the Los Portales Museum in mm -hmm. San Elisario. They'll be talking about some of the traditions that we have there in San Elisario that have held up for years and years and years. Some really unusual ones like la, Los uh, Carboneros, the guys that shoot their shotguns during the procession. Oh, yes. Why mm -hmm. do they do that? They'll be talking about that. Uh, then uh, the descendants part. We'll bring in um, Gary DeLeon. He's an uh, expert on the expedition members. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he makes a statement every day on his site of a member of the day. And mm -hmm. uh, and then their descendants chime in. And uh, very important, he, he's got them all down. He's been doing it for years. He's excellent. He's done a few webinars with us, and he'll be talking about that. So some major genealogical work going on yeah. with that kind of an oh, effort. Yeah, yeah. and he's... And he's finding out things. I mean, because people like that's where a lot of people say, "Well, my uncle came with." Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, from, that kind uh, of thing. The peninsula, yeah. and I'm like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> no, he didn't." You know, but uh, then you got connections, and connections. We've got uh, a few people, two two different people that'll be 
presenting there on the on the Camino Real de Tierra Dentro, mm. uh, our group's project for connections, which is a sister city connection, tourism, economic development, that kind of stuff that we're doing with all of the cities that are on the Camino Real, both in Mexico and the state of Chihuahua, uh, here in Texas and in New Mexico. So we're creating these connections along to work together in tourism and in uh, economic development to, mm -hmm. to and and of course to hold the history together so that we keep it out of the out of the showcases and museums we want out there we want people to listen to it just like we're doing right now absolutely i mean it's a good thing for things to be in museums but if it's only in museums that's when well it, it people stops start being, forgetting about it exactly and thinking like oh no that's just you know uh you know uh stuffy history as opposed right. to literally living which we're yeah. talking about again this that's is living history that's and why, then, of course, gastronomy. gastronomy yeah, we're fascinated to yeah. talk about that there because yeah. that's very living. Yeah, what we're doing there is we're bringing in uh, Karen Santa Maria. She's an expert on presenting the gastronomy part of it, bringing it together, making it work together. And what she'll do is they'll they'll cook. They'll actually have a a live cooking area oh, wow. where they'll actually cook something from the area. We have the honorary consul of of Spain, Martha Vera, will be the guest chef. Mm -hmm. for her and uh i i wonder what they're gonna cook but <laughs> but it'll be something on that and then she talks about the gastronomy and how it works along the camino all the way from mexico city uh through the tribes into uh into new mexico so again that's what's coming up here with that upcoming history symposium again april 1598 Birth of the American Southwest happening this month, April 30th. Again, people can find out all the information, culturalheritagesociety.com. Click on events. You'll see yeah. the poster as we've had it up here. Again, we'll just pop it up again real quick. Now, uh, it'll as be, we're coming I don't know here. if you don't mind me saying it, but the, it'll be in San Elisario there at the uh, Pistoleros mm -hmm. uh, Cantina and Grill Event Center that they have in the back, the old Adobe Horseshoe. And we'll have it in the back there. And it's free to the public. Yes. This is a free event. And again, that's 1500 Main Street. Very good mention of it there. But even if you can't go out there, I mean, there's going to be a lot to do and things going on there. But you will also do a pretty good job at making sure you put this out online as well, yeah, right? Yeah, it'll be online, Facebook Live. It'll be on uh, YouTube Live. And it'll be on GoToWebinars. And then we'll we'll record it and it'll be on our, on our YouTube channel, which is uh, CHS TV. So again, I mean, the beauty of that kind of thing that we appreciate here, the idea of instant archive here. So those are just some of those details, but we got to take that next break right now. And uh, coming out of this next break, we'll talk more about, as we were mentioning it during the break, the subsequent history of La Toma and then all of mean everything that flows from it, the missions, the mission trail, and all that uh, settlement and colonization right. that happened to points north of here. So we'll talk more about that. We will take a phone call or two as well if people want to do so. May have someone on the line here right now. If you're calling in in the middle of a segment you might get put on hold for a minute but if you want to do so that number to call is 915-544-5876 915-544-KTSM you are listening to a break in our facebook streaming of the el paso history radio show which airs live on ktsm am 690 in el paso texas and live right here now on our el paso history radio show page on facebook.com Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his Legacy Home Team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. 
El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 9... On the program here. Uh, For our next program, uh, coming up next week here on the... What day is that? Uh, doing the math here, that is going to be the 16th. We're going to be joined by uh, Max Grossman and Father Garcia of Sacred Heart Church talking about the new research having been done at the Vatican about the origins, founding, and early history of Sacred Heart and also in reference to then specifically what is going on with the restoration efforts and how this will affect that here. Also more sponsors to tell you about here on the program, uh, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Uh, go there for everything you need, Southwest souvenirs, gifts, jewelry, and decor. They have a great selection of local items and local themed items here that, again, for particularly if you want to take uh, good gifts to people or just add that own flair to your own, well, current place of residence here. They've got everything that you might want or have and a great selection. They're always getting new stuff in here. So, again, if you want to find them, their 12,000 square foot showroom on Lee Trevino, uh, you can mention the El Paso History Radio Show for a discount, but find them online at missiondelray.com or call 915 915- Four four zero two one four zero. That's nine one five four four zero two one four zero. So again, uh, joined here in studio again as we are throughout this program here by Al Borrego, president of the Cultural Heritage Society of the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro. We're talking a little bit about the program that you all have coming up here again, April thirtieth, as part of the April fifteen ninety eight birth of the American Southwest here and all the different ways you're going into that. So again, we have been talking a lot about in reference to like uh, La Toma and how that then set everything up and then all the history that flows from it again, the subsequent history as you put it, which is a good way to because essentially that is the foundational moment of when, I mean, among other things, the missions will then show up because of out of that concept of the possession of this land, though. Also, one other thing I've heard is of interesting, particularly on the whole, you know, seven cities of gold, El Dorado, all that concept here is that, I mean, this was not the first interaction that was ever had between, you know, uh, Spaniards, you know, Europeans essentially, and the natives peoples. I mean, it had been going on for, you know, decades prior, better part of the previous century for the most part. And it was always interesting that this whole seven cities of gold thing, much as was talked about, I mean, there are different 
interpretations or different responses by some of the native peoples to that essentially gold itself here. But one of the more persuasive ones is more of a theory than anything was that the whole seven cities of gold that uh, for the peoples that were, were wanting to remain unbothered and just wanted the people that were coming through very focused on finding the gold. It was always, yeah, no, it's that next canyon over. It's that next mountain range over. No, totally. Just keep going. Don't stop here. Keep going and you will totally find it. If you haven't hit it yet, just right. please keep going is kind of a concept there. Right. Yeah. Actually, I think it was copper up there in the Four Corners area. And they thought it was because they probably saw the Spaniards wearing gold and they probably said, yeah, we have that. You yeah, know? It's, it's pretty yeah, close it to that. Like yeah, you might yeah. want to go over there kind yeah. of thing here. So, And then they jumped on it. You know, I mean, it, that's the way it was. I mean, I've had conversations, conferences with the, in Mexico with people talking about silver because the mm. Camino Real uh, down south, south of what Santa Barbara Chihuahua, mm -hmm. south that all the way to Mexico City was called Camino de la Plata first. Mm -hmm. uh, and just like this one is La Ruta de Oñate is what it was from Chihuahua, southern Chihuahua to the border. I mean, it's, as I want to say, I recall reading previously in history that that was part of Oñate's wealth himself was in, in silver and yes. uh, possessions that they had kind of in his uh, family lineage. Yeah. I mean, you got to think about that guy. I mean, he was rich. His mm -hmm. family was rich. They owned silver, all the silver mines in Zacatecas. They owned the silver mines in Santa Barbara. And then he gets a call from his buddy uh, and says, uh, hey, uh, do you want to go check out these seven cities of gold? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would have said, no, I'll watch, you know, I'll, I'll watch Leave it to Beaver on the TV, you know. <laughs> but uh, he went and did it. And I'm like, why would you do it? But I had a conversation with... Uh, one of the one of the one of the state directors for the National Institute in mm -hmm. Mexico and I, one of the guys from um, Aguascalientes one day and he was going off on on the Spaniards and said yeah well because we mentioned Camino de la Plata he goes yeah well that's what it was called because the Spaniards took all the gold and I mean the silver mm -hmm. they, and so much silver went through that road that's why it was called because they took all the silver from the mines and. Finally, when he got done, I asked him, I said, so who was mining the silver before the Spaniards? Well, nobody. Yeah, exactly. It was not a <laughs> And they're still useful... mining those mines today. Yeah. See, so I mean, look at what you got. That's what I tell them. I look at the buildings. Look at Mexico. Look at us. We don't have rocks like they do down south, so we have adobe. But oh, we, yeah. But we have, um, we have a lot of stuff here. I mean, we have plants that existed i mean look we had vineyards here that existed mm -hmm. for many years that are or that are coming back in more recent oh, years yeah. and we have a lot of stuff that's good of course the like you were saying la toma what did it bring by by taking possession of the land well then they had to they became subjects of the crown so now are you supposed to, they're supposed to behave kind of like a spaniard or whatever the crown meant uh the reason it was uh, done. The reason it was the possession was taken mm -hmm. is because the king wanted his fifth. Oh, of course, so yeah. That's the key. That's why you you make it part of the crown because now he gets his part, and he definitely wanted his part here. Definitely. And so that'll then lead us to the establishment and continuation of the history of the missions here. But tell you right. what, we got to take that next break right now. So coming out of the break, we'll talk more about this, how we then get to the missions here, and about. Well, just all that common concepts, and again, how we're going to be talking about it with that upcoming symposium. So we'll be back right after this break with more of the El Paso History Radio Show. Again, we'll take a phone call if you want to. That number to call, 915-544-5876, 915-544-KTSM. Back in a minute. Pepe's. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. 
We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com, and you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday. Coming up for you, of course, uh, we have only this week, only in El Paso, Inc. The FBI special agent in charge for El Paso talks about cyber threats living in the borderland for the first time, his long law enforcement career and more. And the chief executive for the Medical Center of the Americas transitioning into a new job, a general partner into a new venture capital capital firm that aims to bring more of Silicon Valley to El Paso and a unique set of barracks, the first of their kind in the Western Hemisphere, is going up over at Fort Bliss. El Paso's business journal, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery. Find them online at elpasoinc.com. At least one of the partners we got to mention here as well uh, for uh, real estate here in El Paso, call Patrick Tuttle, the real estate guy with Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate at 915-588-1850. Patrick is an excellent realtor to go to for El Paso homes for sale or rent. Again, the number to call 915-588-1850. If you want to get directly a hold of him, pretty responsive to messages here, even if you're getting him at uh, other points during the day. He always changes his message, actually, to let you know what day it is and when he will respond to your messages specifically. So if you're looking for a good and active realtor in our area, 
fully recommended there here. So again, joined here in studio by Al Borrego, president of the Cultural Heritage Society for the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro, which is a long way to say that we're talking about the impacts that has come from the Camino Real and how it continues to this day. Right. Yeah, so we're talking about missions. Mm -hmm. How did they come about? Well, along with the Spaniards come the Franciscans. Oh, yeah, because, of course, we talked about that initial expedition that happened here, but then that was, again, initial, and that, of course, implies that more came after it. But before we get too far into that, we do have a call waiting on the line here, patiently enough. We do have uh, Raul coming in with us. Raul, good morning. Hey, guys, uh, that upcoming historical gastronomic event Al has coming up sounds great. Hey, Al, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good. How are you? Just fine. Al Borrego, great guy. An incredibly talented man, a former engineer, uh, evolved into an artist. And by the way, his paintings are amazingly beautiful. And then a promoter of the arts, his home, uh, his hometown and history. Bravo, brother. Thank you. Uh, I, had the, I had the pleasure of meeting Al years ago while we were members of a singles club. Uh, and Andrew, another great show. You started out with a bang with that Franklin Mountain lovers and activists, Dr. Eric Kappas and Jim Tolbert. Uh, and all of us here, we love history and History is very much in the news and the culture wars over CRT. Uh, and uh, La Toma, the position of the land for the treasures, as, as Al was saying, and, and everybody becoming a subject of the crown, including the slaves, the peones, and everyone under the king and the kings. And the kings thought that they were chosen by God to rule. And, and, and like the native slaves that mined the silver in Guanajuato, which I visited, visited re recently. And I got to see the Inquisition Museum, where they tortured thieves and murderers and adulterers and women and heretics and gays. And as students of European and American and, and uh, Mexican history, we know that the Spaniards were audacious. They believed that they were racially and theologically superior to the Native Americans, the savages. And Western Europeans were colonialists and imperialists. goes back to Alexander the Great, the Greeks, then the Romans, then the Portuguese, and the Spaniards, the English, the Dutch, the French. And the Spaniards were Catholics, and they believed that they had God on their side. And they conquered with disease, ships, steel, guns, and gold fever. And, and, and there are Americans who criticize what they call wokeism uh, and do not want their kids taught uh, any of the bad of history, only the good of history, only the, the good men and not the, and not the bad men, uh, only the good men who moved humanity forward and not the bad men who did anything for money and power. I mean, yeah, you're talking about some of the implications of the history, and we're certainly interested in this kind of a program in uh, discussing history as it exists. I mean, a phrase that I find persuasive is if your study of history only ever makes you proud, you're probably not studying history. But we're getting a little bit further afield from the focus we have on this kind of a program of learning about that history. But yeah, the history is there to learn from and to understand, and hopefully in the modern sense not to repeat, but we just strive for the, again, and exceptions that come from understanding how we got to where we are now, if you really want to put it in context there. So appreciate the point and the call. They're getting a little bit further into what we talk about Monday through Friday here, but we'll take that point in due course as we get there. So appreciate the point and the call there. So speaking of the missions here, again, the idea of the, you know, from La Toma, as he was saying there, completely accurate, becoming of the, you know, subjects here, it's not enough to just say, well, you're subjects and now you'll do exactly what you're supposed to. There was, again, methods of control that were needed there. And among other things, the way that uh, the Spaniards in general what about doing that was essentially what became the mission trail. Right. The whole missions. Yeah. The whole mission concept of uh, building a mission at the main part of that. And of course, you got to remember that's the Franciscans. There's mm -hmm. nine Franciscans with Oniatis expedition. The job of the Franciscans were to convert them to Christianity. That was their job. That was because they felt that, uh, that uh, God was the way, uh, to being here forever mm -hmm. that was the that was it you, that was the religion to follow was uh christianity and of course natives believed more on the sun and that kind of stuff you know but uh it was hard it was hard but once oh, yeah. they became subjects they built the missions they were building the missions uh and uh, in order to to get the the rewards of being a subject mm -hmm. then well you had to do certain things you had to work you had to just like we do today i mean i call it the same thing as walmart you know you, you go work okay you go work you get paid you get what you want okay basically the same concept i guess we just don't call it slavery anymore 
But it's basically the same thing. When mm-hmm. to me, slavery is more about owning the person. Right. Yeah. The whole that's, chattel that's, concept. That's mm-hmm. it. That's a whole different thing. But uh, yeah, there. Every you can call anybody a slave. That's why I'm saying you can call anybody a slave. I'm a slave to Wage, Walmart. Yeah, wage slave was another job. term. Sure. It'll, slightly you know, more modern context sure. here. So, but know. I mean, the way again, the way it came about here, because I mean, to other historical context is the way the reason, among other things, chattel slavery, ex, you know, cropped up. Not so much in this region, but particularly, you know, the uh, southeast part of the country, the south as we call it now, right. of the United States, was because the old concept of the ways applied by other European powers anyway, right. of trying to essentially use the indigenous you know, workforce, as they may consider it, is that uh, if they didn't like what they were doing, they would say, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. And just leave and go off and do their own thing. I mean, right. even if you want to go into the American Revolution, the whole Boston Tea Party, an overlooked part of it, is the idea that they dressed up as natives both as a – not quite disguised, but as a protest, protest. of like we're, we're going back to – not exactly our roots, but we're going to do what we want and disappear if we need to. I mean, it was in some of those accounts of European settlement, the uh, problems were, I mean, you go like to the whole Roanoke and the Croatan situation, right. the idea that maybe not something bad happened to that colony, but they were just like, you know what, kind of screw this way we're doing it. This is hard. We're just going to go live with the natives kind of thing. And that was persuasive. So that right. was an issue in other areas. But yeah. here, I mean, the whole Pueblo society was different, even if the Apaches were also, you know, its sure. own The Apaches its own force. were a different breed. That's my yeah. people. But uh, the Apaches were the first people that they encountered. Mm. So you would see a lot of instances where the the onesie twosie Spaniards would come up and they'd never return. Uh, Who knows what happened to them, you know? But uh, you had Franciscans that came up with Sanchez Rodriguez. They left two of them. They never found those guys. So things happened Mm. because that's the, it's the, the time. It's when it was. I mean, they're not used to them. They, they're like what, there's this person riding an animal I never seen before. You know, they're dominating this thing. Who are they? What is that? Animal? I want to know more what's it, going on there. It yeah. tastes good, you know? So, you know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? I mean, it's just, uh, you got to put yourself back in that time and how it went. Now, sure, once, uh, just remember, you all, they, everybody likes to put everything together. Mm. But then you talk about the Pueblo Revolt of, oh, yeah. uh, of 1680. That's how many years after Oñate? I mean, we're talking better part of a century again because we're yeah. talk- beyond you're, generational. You're talking 82 years later, you know, and the average lifespan then was what, 30 years old, 40 years old? So, yeah. So you got to look at, at uh, really what happened. You know, look at um, there was 29 tribes in the area, 29 pueblos, mm. you know, so where are they today? Oh, well, they're still there. Yeah, largely where they were yeah. in history because, so yeah. Are, you know, there was the Wampanoags over there at Plymouth. Where are they today? There are none. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And look at where else are the reservations in the east. Where's the reservation in Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, Iowa, North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. Where are those reservations? There are none. Mm-hmm. But they are where the Spanish states are. Just remember that part. And I- the Spanish countries. Yeah, no, that's true as They're well. There. Again, an interesting juxtaposition, but again, we're talking about it. I sometimes think about this to get a little bit slightly more modern with it. And the way that we think about, you know, the development of European history, if we even just talked about the same way of, you know, native history in the same kind of terms as we do European history, it would be con- it's, it's completely just different, completely different conception of it. So, and they're saying like, oh yeah, the native peoples were all the same. You wouldn't say that about any other region right. of the world here. So yeah, the Pueblo peoples were different from, from the, the from the Mississippi peoples, from the Apache peoples, yeah. from the East Coast peoples. So opinion all with the same brush just does a disservice both to the current descendants of them and to just our understanding of history exactly. on its own here. So the reason that they ended up from La Toma ended up doing this establishment of the missions here. Again, we have uh, some pictures up mm-hmm. here of, of course, uh, Isleta, this Isleta Mission. This Isleta Mission, the famous Silver Dome there, and of course, one of the uh, chief locations for the current Tigua tribe right. as it exists. And then, of course, the Socorro, Socorro Mission, mission. that uh, we got to actually a pretty good old picture of it as well from uh, uh, one of the earlier restorations here and then of course we have San Elizario that yes for the sticklers out there was not a mission but right. rather a Presidio Chapel but I mean still as that a- mean you know Presidio Chapel means mm-hmm. that there was always three missions for every Presidio yep. they'd build the Presidio to have soldiers to take care of the missions yep 
for for attacks or whatever would happen. So that's why they built the Presidio. And then you have a chapel for the military who could mm -hmm. be any religion, just like Fort Bliss has a chapel, a, a ship has a chapel. It's the same concept. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just for Catholics in the in the ch Presidio Chapel either. You could have Jewish, because there were. Yep. You know, you do whatever you wanted in there. But the, the missions were very important. The two missions you showed are here, of course, on our mission trail. Mm -hmm. And uh, that those missions were built at, after uh, 1680, after the Pueblo Revolt. Right. Because those Span Spaniards were thrown out. And all, uh, I think there was like 180 that came to this area. Mm -hmm. The rest of them went to Hanos, in, where it's now in Mexico. But uh, they came down, and then they built, quote-unquote, missions. I don't know. There was nobody to convert anymore. But then they are missions because they built those churches. But uh, but those are left. The, all the missions in New Mexico were knocked down, except for the one at Acoma. That's still the original. But the, they were knocked down during the Pueblo Revolt. They, that, that was a revolt against that whole way of life that they didn't want to do anymore yeah essentially that Too many taxes mm -hmm. that kind of stuff the control and yeah, all of that came along that. with that and i mean there was of course violence associated with that sure. but mostly it was a you're not going to be here anymore right. you choose what form that takes and we're going to keep pushing you south and of course i mean that leads to the legends and myths that exist in this area and still you know the importance of this region as to the transitional nature from again old mexico to new mexico from right. that part of the colonization of new spain to the way that they then had it within again the american southwest as you put it here uh -huh. they came and that you know the spaniards and the forces associated with them to this region kind of regrouped and eventually would have their influence restored over that region but again that then essentially we get into you know the more modern age and into the u.s history and then you know new mexico and texas history as those states mm -hmm. came about here so this this is, again, all the kind of stuff that you talk about, the traditions, all the follow-on. When we're talking about the coming up event here, I'll pop that up on screen one more time before we hit yep. that next break here. With, again, the Cultural Heritage Society's uh, History Symposium, April 1598, birth of the American Southwest. So tracing all of this, again, fascinating history that is still very much living today. Exactly. All right, so we got to take that last break here before the end of the program here. So coming out of this, we'll talk more about the event, how people can get involved, and of course uh, what we got coming up next for you. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio six ninety KTSM M one EP. Matt, you are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM six ninety in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. 
Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915 915- today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a Had a great show here today with Al Borrego, president of the Cultural Heritage Society for the Camino Real de Tierra Adentro. Again, all the history we've been talking about kind of surrounding, well, the event that you all have coming up. Again, April 1598 is the name of the History Symposium, Birth of the American Southwest, happening Saturday, April 30th. Again, for people to find information, culturalheritagesociety.com or, again, just go to the Pistoleros Events Center, 1500 Main Street, because it will be free and a lot of events going on that day. And, again, streaming online, because if anyone just can't make it out or it still prefers this way, which, sure, why not? This is, you, they can find it online because it's kind of an instant archive the way you all do it. That's right. Yeah. And, and I forgot to mention, we're going to have uh, three wines of the Camino Real. Ooh, okay. They're uh, doing a, a wine tasting thing that's free, also, of course. But they'll be talking about those wines that are on the, on the Camino Real. All right. Well, Al, Al, thank you very much again for joining us here today to talk about all of these stuff here. we got to end the program there. So, again, find them online, culturalheritagesociety.com. And I'll be headed out to Pepe's here in a little bit. I don't think Al can join us. But, uh, well, save me a seat out there because I'll be a few minutes. Uh, just got to end the show here in program. But otherwise, thank you all for tuning in for the El Paso History Radio Show. We'll see you all next week here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Have a great one, y'all.